Hello everyone, welcome back to Whisk Part 2, the unexpected sequel. <laughs> Last time I accidentally made Blender in Godot, I was trying to make something completely different and I basically ended that video by giving up. Uh, but I recently decided to give it another go, uh, so I spent a few days finishing Whisk as an actual 3D modeling program. Uh, no, this isn't actually a direct Blender competitor. Think of it more like a sprite, but 3D. I did fix the weird lighting issues. A lot of you pointed out that I was using both sides of the mesh, which was causing things to get weird. It uh, turns out, even if I fix that, things still act strangely. The light is attached to the camera at this point, so all of this is just wrong. Long story short, Godot tries to smoothly shade things by default, so you just have to tell it not to do that, and then it suddenly behaves. Uh, I also added full controller support uh, for all your lo-fi, cozy, low-poly modeling needs. I also added the option to actually save things to disk and to export and a few other things. You know, I'll talk about that when we get there. Let's jump right in. All right, so we are going to make a donut today because what else would you make in a 3D modeling program? Uh, by the way, if you want to use the controller, you can hold the right trigger to see what does what as far as shortcuts. Also, if you come over here, you can mouse over these and they will tell you what they do. So we are going to reset our snapping plane to the X axis and we're going to want to place a point on that. So I'm going to go to First off, triangle mode, you can see you can make triangles with this, and this is how you make your meshes. Uh, but instead of a triangle, we're going to place single points, and this will allow us to plot out what we're doing. Uh, what I'm going to do here, I'm now on the Y snapping plane, and I can actually use the last snapping option. So come down here and press that button, and it'll snap you on to this height. So I can just trace this circle around, go to about here, we're going to do the same thing for these guys. So I don't know here and here, and then same thing on the top. We'll come around to about here and you'll see that's a little wonky, but it's okay. We have uh, the basis of a donut. So if I want to start stitching these together, I could do that. Um, the way the stitching mode works is I'm going to select this one and then this one. Notice they turn yellow. When I come down here, it's going to deselect that first point and select the next one. And so I can continue this all the way across. So you can make zigzags with this pretty easily. Now you'll notice I just made that one quadrant. That's not actually what I wanted. So I'm going to back this off with the undo button and then I'm going to turn on my mirror mode. So we'll just do everything for now. Uh, you'll see it does a whole bunch of mirroring and just like that we made one half of a donut. Uh, I actually would like a few more polygons than this so we are going to undo that again. We're also going to turn off the vertical mirroring because I don't actually want to make a full donut. I want to make half a donut because a donut has frosting on it. A bagel doesn't. So we're going to come to about half height and then I'm going to place one kind of right in the middle like that and then we're going to connect this across and then we're going to again place one kind of in between so you see i'm toggling back and forth between these and that is a donut with just a couple more faces than we had previously i'm going to now change the color so we'll come into here and we'll pick something kind of donut ish i don't know that looks good enough we're going to come around and we're just going to kind of pretty much do the same thing here. So to that, to that, to that. Ah, that was the wrong one. To that, okay. Uh, by the way, some of these are pretty wonky. If you want to move it, you can switch to the modify setting and that will distort the mesh as you move these. So modify mode is pretty useful for just tweaking and changing the shape of these things. So honestly, from this side, that looks Pretty good. So we're going to do the same thing on the top. Uh, we're going to grab this. We're going to do an icing. I don't know. What should we try? Like chocolate or something? We'll see how that looks. We may need to change the color. And then I'm just going to do the same thing again. So we're going to make sure to go back to place mode, play sequential, and we're just going to start stitching this up. And I'm getting lazy. So we're just going to stitch this up like this on the inside. I managed to choose the absolute worst color for the icing. Let's see if we can make something a little bit... You know, we're going to go with like a bright pink or something fun. Birthday sprinkle icing. There we are. And that is a donut. So we can get rid of all of these uh, planes. If you double hit it, it'll get rid of the axis too. You can also change the scene. So if you want a better background for your donut, you can do that. Anyways, here's our donut. You can save it. Uh, we will call this happy donut and then we will take our happy little donut and we will export it to a glb file 
And if you're wondering, yes, GLBs can be opened in anything, including Blender. So if I want to import, we will do a GLTF. And here is our donut. Now, if I do the material preview, we should get our colors as well. And you will notice the mesh is a little bit messed up. Okay, uh, it's not rendering these in the right order. So I don't know, there's some option you need to do. I'm not entirely sure. By the way, if you're going to export this to things like Blender, you may want to keep an eye on culling. So this is off by default. But when I turn that on, what it's going to do is when I'm drawing this triangle, you'll see it's visible on both sides. But when I place it, it is going to take the editor camera and it's going to render in that direction. When I swing around the back, you'll see this is a one sided mesh. And this is how graphics usually work by default. Uh, if you turn that off, you get both sides. I had it off by default, but as you can tell, my happy donut doesn't look so happy when I turn on that calling because I wasn't paying attention. This will mess things up if you pull this into something like Blender. So you do want to be careful when you're making that donut that you are looking at the face that you want to be visible. Uh, but again, if you are exporting to something like Unity or Unreal, where you can just render both sides of the mesh, just leave that culling off and it should be fine. You see here, if I open this up in Godot, we have the Happy Donut opened up as a scene. Alternatively, I could have brought in the GLB file. You'll see here's another donut. Uh, this one is a little different, you know, it's as its own scene. But this is importing same way as if you had exported it from Blender. Speaking of Blender, you might be wondering, well, why didn't I just make the donut in a Blender? And that's true, I could have done that. Uh, honestly, this does look a little bit more, I guess you'd say, photorealistic. Whereas this one, uh, let's just grab that for comparison. I don't know, I, it feels more like it belongs in a video game. That's just me, obviously low poly is a very specific look. Either way, I will admit organic shapes are not going to be the best thing that this program can do. Really, this is going to excel when you're trying to do something a little bit more, we'll say angular. Uh, so something specifically retro, like a boat, which was where this whole project started. So I decided to sit down with the three modeling programs that I've used, including Whisk, and give myself 10 minutes to make a boat. So the first one up is gonna be Blender. Uh, of course, this is a mesh modeling tool or mesh subdivision modeling I mean, really the way this works is you start with a primitive shape and then you distort or change that shape but if you're not very good as i'm not very good you're going to end up with something that looks very symmetrical uh, there's kind of this look to blender low poly where everything looks like it's made from primitive shapes that have been slightly distorted um, again if you're really good at this it might look better but i am not and that's kind of the point Moving on to parameterized CAD, these programs use a sketch and extrude system. So I'm going to draw something. And for this one, I said I'd do a pontoon uh, because that's a kind of boat that is pretty easy to start from a flat sketch. The biggest problem with this software is that it's an engineering tool, so it doesn't really care about the density of the meshes. So you might actually need to go pull this into Blender and use like a decimate option or something to reduce the polygon count. So what you get is just a shape that looks like a shape, but you don't get a lot of control over it. And so here is my final boat that I did in Whisk. And for this one, 10 minutes was almost more time than I needed. Uh, this is really great for throwing something together. And I think this one looks like the best of the bunch. Um, obviously, I was able to do multiple colors. I was able to really shape it uh, in the little bit of time I had. And so honestly, that's the reason I think you should try this program is because you can learn it in four minutes if you rewind the video and you can make something really cool in, you know, 10 minutes. So feel free to head over to the link in the description. This is available on itch. It is a free and open source tool. Uh, there are optional payments, but uh, you can just click no thank you, especially when you're trying it out. The web export isn't perfect. It does work. Uh, so I would recommend downloading it if you want to use this for anything more than a you know 30 second evaluation. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think. I will consider adding to this program in the future. I'm definitely going to be focusing on my actual game for the next little while but if there's enough interest or enough feedback i will definitely maybe come back <laughs> no promises but also i do think this is kind of a cool program so that's about it for today uh thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one